So, <clears throat> um, you know that uh, you all know the definition for hemoptysis. It's a bleeding that originates from the lower respiratory tract. There are various definitions of severity and um, it also depends from the underlying cause and from the cardiopulmonary status. The immediate risk for hemoptysis, for severe hemoptysis, is asphyxia and it's really uh, um, a very uh, urgent um, situation. So, um, regarding hemoptysis, there are several possibilities. It may originate from the systemic circulation. Most of the, of the time, it's the systemic circulation which is involved, mainly the bronchial arteries, but also other systemic arteries, like, for instance, uh, the internal thoracic artery the, or the phrenic arteries. And this is the case for patients with bronchiectasis, uh, or with chronic necrotizing infections or tumors. And the reason is that uh, um, with these conditions there's a release of angiogenetic growth factors. More rarely the bleeding is due to the pulmonary arteries. It represented 10% of patients referred for uh, embolization in one series in, um, from my colleague Antoine Khalil from Bichat Hospital in Paris. And it's the case for patients with false aneurysms of uh, infectious origin and for patients with tumors, uh, central lung cancer may invade the, the red vessels and cause uh, hemoptysis uh, who have, which have a pulmonary artery origin. And very, very rarely, but you need to be aware of that, of that possibility, the bleeding comes from the outer and it's usually catastrophic. Last uh, cause, uh, it's more a differential for hemoptysis, is um, um, intraalveolar hemorrhage. And uh, it is seen in patients with vasculitis. And you may suspect that diagnosis when there is a contrast between the uh, extent of the crown glass, which is very, uh, very important, and the small amount of expectorated blood. In that situation, you, you have to suspect uh, intraalveolar hemorrhage. So, the role of imaging in patients with severe hemoptysis is very important and there are four different objectives. The, the main one and the most urgent one is to determine the site of bleeding. Does it come from the right or from the left lung? Because you will have to protect the healthy lung from um, uh, being um, uh, full of blood. Second objective is to uh, analyze, the, uh, determine the source of bleeding. Does it come from the systemic arteries, from the pulmonary arteries, or from the aorta? Third objective is to um, analyze the anatomic localization of bronchial arteries before embolization. And maybe uh, <coughs> the fourth objective, uh, which is to find the cause, is you, 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 you could think it's very important, but in very uh, urgent situation, it's uh, probably the less urgent thing. It will only uh, avoid recurrence, but for the immediate management of the patient, first you have to uh, um, be um, able to determine the site of bleeding. This is here the case of a patient who has, as you can see, uh, Havelar um, um, syndrome. And uh, if you refer this patient for bronchial uh, embolization, it won't work because the bleeding is from the aorta. It's uh, the fistulization of a large aortic aneurysm. So bleeding site is our first objective. And in patients with severe hemoptysis, you, you need to know that chest x-ray as a role, it may show the bleeding site. This is uh, an example of a patient who was admitted for a first episode of hemoptysis. And while the patient was in the uh, intensive care unit, the uh, hemoptysis recurred. And when we perform a second chest x-ray, we can see that there is a halvelar um, syndrome from the right upper lobe, meaning that the bleeding comes from the right upper lobe. And it's very uh, important information. And the patient was referred for bronchial embolization, starting with the right side. 
Um, many years ago, in 2002, we published that paper. Um, our question was the following, can CT replace bronchoscopy in the detection of the site and cause of bleeding in patients with large or massive hemoptysis? And the answer was yes, uh, it can replace bronchoscopy. You can see that for the site it was equivalent uh, between uh, CT and bronchoscopy, but for the cause, CT was really superior to bronchoscopy. On CT, there are two categories of sign. The first category is non-specific CT findings, which are the consequence of bleeding and not the cause of bleeding. Uh, and these anomalies include crown glass opacities or consolidation. It depends on the amount of blood filling the uh, alveolar spaces. And it has a value to localize the bleeding, but only in non-dependent lung areas. Here we can see here uh, some ground glass in the right upper lobe, so we may suspect that the bleeding comes from uh, the, the right upper lobe. Here we have here ground glass in both lower lobes, so it's not possible to say if, it, if the bleeding comes from the right or uh, from the left lung. Second non-specific finding is atelectasis, when there's uh, blood clots obliterating the proximal bronchi. That was the case in that patient. Here it was a hemoptysis following a percutaneous score biopsy and the patients went well and the reason was of the, this clotting inside the bronchi and he had to have the clots removed uh, on bronchoscopy. These focal opacities, which are the consequence of bleeding and not the cause, uh, can be in sometimes misleading. Here, the pulmonologist suspected that the patient had a lung cancer, and I said, okay, take your time, let's do, he had a massive hemoptysis, maybe it's only the consequence of local bleeding, so let's see if in one week it's still the same, and since it partly resolved, it was only the consequence of bleeding and, and not a lung cancer. So uh, we have to perform short-term follow-up to avoid this uh, sort of uh, confusion. The second categories of CT findings as are those which are related to the cause of bleeding and the first cause for severe hemoptysis is bronchiectasis. You have here a first example here of uh, bronchiectasis in the, in the Nelson segment, here with a small amount of ground glass, meaning that the, the cause of bleeding is here. Another case is with a, a left lower lobe bronchiectasis and here another case uh, with bronchiectasis in the, uh, in the middle lobe. Second uh, category of, of uh, specific findings in patients with tuberculosis. Tuberculosis uh, can be a cause of uh, um, severe hemoptysis in patients with acute infection, like here, or in patients with uh, sequelae of tuberculosis because there is a bronchial hypervascularization in these patients. Tumors, two different examples. Here it's a lung cancer clearly invading the um, left pulmonary artery, and here um, Another case, aspergillomas uh, are a very uh, common cause of uh, severe bleeding and you have to know that CT is superior to chest x-ray for the detection of uh, aspergilloma uh, because here we cannot see the, maybe here the air question sign but it, it can be difficult to depict it on, on chest x-ray. So in, patient, in patients with such uh, chest changes on chest x-ray, we have to perform an enhanced CT to detect uh, aspergilloma infection. And <coughs> lastly, a very rare cause. I had only one uh, case in my whole uh, activity. It's catamenial hemoptysis. Um, so don't ask me the reason why endometrial tissue might be present in bronchi, that's uh, surprising but that's the case. And I perfectly remember that, uh, that woman who came spontaneously to the hospital saying, I think that I could have a severe hemoptysis tomorrow because I had uh, that the, the months uh, before and 
two months before, so I prefer to be at the hospital in case I have that bleeding. And it, it, it happened to be true. The day after, she had a massive hemoptysis, and when we performed CT, she had that ground glass attenuation of the left uh, upper lobe, and which resolved. And in that case, the treatment is not performing bronchial embolization, but suppressive hormonal therapy. She, she had that treatment, and the hemoptysis never recurred. Um, <clears throat> second uh, important thing is to, uh, after the, the, the site of bleeding and finding some uh, specific findings on uh, CT, is to uh, be able to determine which vessels are involved. And this is uh, something uh, uh, which was uh, part of the ACR appropriateness criteria for hemoptysis, that contrast enhanced multi-detector CT should be performed before uh, uh, embolization to define if the source of bleeding is the bronchial systemic arteries or uh, pulmonary arteries and they should have added or uh, if it comes from the aorta, which is very rare but may happen. So the systemic circulation is involved in the vast majority of cases. This is the reason why sometimes the pulmonologists directly send the patient to uh, the, the cath lab, but I think that we, we need to avoid this. So this is here an example given by my colleague uh, Antoine, uh, patient bleeding from the middle lobe, who was uh, successfully treated by uh, uh, bronchial embolization. Another case of a young patient with uh, aspergillomas who was uh, successfully treated by embolization of the internal thoracic artery. But in some patients, this, this uh, won't work because some patients have bleeding coming from the pulmonary circulation. And this is here an example, a patient with acute tuberculosis. And if you pay attention, you have to notice that here, that enhancing um, nodule here, which is not normal, close to this uh, cavitation, and it represents a false aneurysm. Unfortunately, the patient was sent for bronchial embolization, um, in contradiction with my report mentioning that there was a false aneurysm from the uh, pulmonary arteries and uh, uh, Obviously, there was a recurrence of bleeding, and on the second CT, you can see that this false aneurysm has enlarged. So, that time the pulmonists were convinced, and so the patient was referred for the right procedure, which was to perform a selective pulmonary angiography um, examination, confirming this false aneurysm, which was successfully treated by coil placement. So it's not exceptional in patients with a necrotizing infection. You have to suspect a pulmonary, a pulmonary origin of the bleeding. This is here another example. And to um, allow a better depiction of this false aneurysm, I recommend that first, of course, you have to use contrast. And second, to perform minimum intensity projection reformation which uh, will allow you to depict these um, anomalies. This is a very frightening case. This patient had a Klebsiella pneumonia infection, no hemoptysis, but because the infection was really necrotizing, look at all these cavities, I systematically perform contrast administration, allowing the depiction of this huge false aneurysm, and uh, we did not wait uh, that hemoptysis occurred uh, to prevent this severe complication, the patient was referred for embolization. So, any necrotizing infection use contrast to depict false aneurysm. Uh, another situation in patients with leukemia and uh, chemotherapy for leukemia and aplasia, um, you have to suspect uh, necrotizing infection due to uh, angioinvasive aspergillosis. This was a case in, a, in this woman who was treated for leukemia. You can see here on November 2 and November 8 that there's here a cavitation of this consolidation, which is more um, visible on that reformation. 
no hemoptysis, but several days later, and uh, the patient presented with hemoptysis and using contrasted injection, you can see this huge false aneurysm, and the patient was referred for embolization. And on the first CT performed after the procedure, we had the, the impression that maybe the embolization had failed, but no, that here the mistake is to use uh, contrast administration at first. We should have performed first Hunnan and CT because you can have a stagnation of the contrast inside the false aneurysm. And so I recommended several hours after to perform Hunnan and CT, and you can see that it's spontaneously hyperdense. So it's not a failure of the embolization, it's just the stagnation of the contrast medium. And uh, several days later, we can see that it is perfectly excluded. Uh, <coughs> sometimes uh, false aneurysm uh, can be discovered many, uh, many years after the, 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 the event. So uh, this patient was referred for indeterminate middle lobe pulmonary nodule. You can see here uh, 18 millimeter uh, nodule with no um, fat in it and no calcification, so it is really indeterminate. And at that time, uh, we had a limited access to PET-CT, which would be a good procedure here. And so we performed contrast and study, and fortunately the technologist misunderstood my recommendation and started very early after contrast administration, fortunately, because this allowed uh, realizing that it is enhancing just like the, the right cavity, so it's a part of a pulmonary artery, and it was a false aneurysm in a patient who had several years before Swangan's catheterization, which had been complicated by uh, hemoptysis. So Swangan's catheterization may be uh, followed by a false aneurysm in case where where there, there is a traumatic um, lesion of the pulmonary arteries. Um, in patients with lung cancer, there are two possible sources of bleeding, direct invasion of the pulmonary arteries or ar pulmonary arteries close to uh, necrotizing uh, cavities. And uh, in that case, it's, the treatment is very difficult. Last cause, aortic causes, it's rare but catastrophic. I only had two cases because usually the patient die and so you don't have any time to perform CT or check stray. Here, it was a false aneurysm of the aorta of uh, tuberculous origin. The patient was uh, saved, he was operated. And here uh, the patient died. It was uh, the fistulization of a huge um, uh, aortic aneurysm. Uh, this is the case of a patient treated with stenting and we do not see any um, uh, extravasation of the contrast which does not exclude the diagnosis because since the fistulization is, is uh, uh, not occurring all the time you may miss it when performing the CT scan. Um, last um, option for CT is to help pre embolotherapy screening by, and it's something which is very important, to uh, be able to uh, mention how many bronchial arteries uh, are visible. And if we don't do that, uh, the catheterization fa failure rate is superior compared to only, you know, 15% after uh, performing a, a multi-detector um, CT angiography. So, uh, what is the normal uh, disposition? The bronchial arteries originate from the descending aorta at the level of the uh, left uh, main bronchus. And usually we have one a unique right bronchial artery um, with a common origin with an intercostal artery, so it's one unique uh, right um, intercostal bronchial trunk. And usually, 60% of cases, we have two left bronchial arteries. But in some patients, there, there is an ectopic origin of the bronchial arteries, and in that case, the risk is to miss 
these ectopic arteries while performing the embolization and the risk is a recurrence of bleeding. So here it's an apatrophic right bronchial artery uh, originating from the intercostal bronchial trunk which is really enlarged here. Here a uh, left bronchial artery really enlarged. So there is not a normal size for uh, bronchial arteries. Usually you should not depict them. If you depict them it's abnormal. Some say that a diameter above 2 mm is uh, abnormal but there is no real uh, normal size for bronchial arteries. And in that case uh, CT was very useful because it depicted an ectopic origin from the um, uh, horizontal aorta, so um, at a higher level than uh, usually um, normal. Non-bronchial systemic arteries can be depicted as well, uh, like intercostal arteries or phrenic arteries, or um, internal thoracic arteries, I showed you that case previously, or uh, in some rare situation, um, um, communication with the coronary arteries and it's very difficult to treat. What about the CT acquisition protocol? We need to have uh, an evaluation of the systemic circulation and of the pulmonary artery circulation, so we need to use a large amount of contrast and uh, it's important to uh, perform mini minimum intensity projection for the detection of false aneurysms. Minimum intensity projection, it's it is a sensitization to the depiction of focal ground glass and volume rendering, it's uh, better to depict an anomalous origin of the bronchial arteries. So here, a false aneurysm in MIP reformation. Here you can see on minimum intensity projection that you better depict this focal ground glass than on the standard image. And volume rendering, here we can see an anomalous origin of the left bronchial arteries. Usually they, they originate from the mid part of the aorta and in, the, in this patient they originated from the right side of the descending aorta. And last case, here we have three arteries and this is an anomalous origin of the second bron left bronchial arteries uh, which is better depicted on volume rendering than on the uh, standard images. So in conclusion, severe hemoptysis is a medical emergency. The first objective is to detect the site of bleeding in order to protect the healthy lung. The role of CT angiography is very important. It helps localizing the bleeding site, finding the origin, is it the systemic uh, circulation? It's uh, really the first cause, but in some patients the bleeding comes from the pulmonary arteries or from the aorta. CT angio can be used as road mapping before embolotherapy and maybe the last objective is to uh, find the cause of bleeding. Uh, two take-home messages for necrotizing infection use contrast to the big false aneurysms and don't bet on the origin. It's important to take a few minutes to have the patient on the, on the CT scan because it allows choosing the correct procedure. Remember that case where the patient was referred for bronchial embolization and it didn't work because the bleeding was coming from the pulmonary arteries. With that I want to, you to thank you for your attention. And a small announcement, if you want to join us for the European Society Thoracic Imaging meeting in Geneva this year, we will be very pleased. <laughs>